Hello everyone, and welcome to my first video. Today I will be analyzing and giving some background to The Songs of Innocence by William Blake. My inspiration for doing these videos was that in high school and in college, there were a ton of videos to help explain literature and poetry. So I'm starting with a series of romantic British poems, but if anyone has any other requests that would help them in their studies, I'd love to create a video that would help them. So starting with some background, William Blake believed that innocence and experience were the two contrary states of the human soul. His poems reflect his very strong political beliefs and spiritual beliefs. Some scholars have said that innocence in Blake's poems represent the unfallen world, while experience represents the fallen world. I feel like you can really see this in comparison when you look at the introduction to the songs of experience. Innocence to Blake is something that is easily corrupted by the fallen world. So now let's get into some of the details. Songs of Innocence was published first in 1789. These poems weren't just written, they were pieces that were illuminated, engraved, hand-painted, colored, and hand-printed by the author himself. This made it so that these poems weren't as widespread back in his day because they weren't available to as many people. Um, the first print only produced 17 to 18 copies and they were really only sold to friends and private collectors. In the cover for Songs of Innocence, there are two children kneeling next to their mother who is holding a book and the children are leaning over it. You can see the pastoral theme even in the cover as the children are outside in the countryside. There are birds flying up through the letters, a piper on the letter I, which you will see in the introduction. There is an angel in the letter N, and then children can be seen playing around in the letters O and G. So Blake was writing the Songs of Innocence poems during the time of the Industrial Revolution. There was a lot of child labor where these children would work for over 12 hours and would receive little pay, especially in comparison to an adult. It was very dangerous for these children to be working around machines. The children would often um, be used to help get stuck object out of these machines and that would result in them being hurt and sometimes even being killed. This sparked some of the ideas found in the poems of Songs of Innocence. So now jumping into the first two stanzas of the introduction to the Songs of Innocence, it says, Piping down the valleys wild, piping songs of pleasant glee, on a cloud I saw a child, and he laughing said to me, Pipe a song about a lamb, so I piped with merry cheer. Piper, pipe that song again. So I piped, he wept to hear. So let's look at the very first line of this poem where it says, piping down the valleys wild. The word wild is expressing that the place that the piper is in is free to grow. Wild is nature in its purest form as it is free from human interference. So the piper is piping in a place of complete innocence that is untouched by the hands of the world. Also note that at this point in the poem, we are speaking in the present tense um, of the piper piping a song. So then the next line says that the piper is piping songs of pleasant glee. Blake is portraying the songs as being pleasant, but then being also full of glee. Glee is defined as being a great delight, while pleasant means something that is enjoyable to a person. Um, they are on different spectrums of happiness, so he's using glee as in like super happy, and then something that's uh, pleasant, that it's a delight to someone, um, kind of a softer word to use. 
but they're being used right next to one another. So, um, the next lines say, On a cloud I saw a child, and he laughing said to me, Note that the child here is up in the sky. He's in a cloud, like an angel would be. They aren't even touching the ground yet, um, where the piper is. They are, right now, untouched by the world. Then the child um, says, pipe a song about a lamb. Um, the lamb in... In this can mean innocence, it can mean purity, or it can be a symbol of Christ. Some say that um, it is lowercase here because the child does not yet know um, what the lamb is a symbol of, that um, it's a symbol of Christ. So the next part reads, So I piped with merry cheer. Piper, pipe that song again. So I piped. He wept to hear. The piper piping the song again is the child gaining experience. They are listening, and they are hearing the information again, and it is not just out of complete innocence this time. An interpretation could be that the child is weeping because he is learning of what Christ sacrificed for him at this point of the poem. The child begins to connect emotionally to the song, which is also something that comes with maturity. Repetition of the song helps further convey the meaning of it to the child. The next three stanzas of the poem say, Drop thy pipe, thy happy pipe. Sing thy songs of happy cheer. So I sung the same again, while he wept with joy to hear. Piper, sit thee down and write, in a book that all may read. So he vanished from my sight and I plucked a hollow reed, and I made a rural pen, and I stained the water clear, and I wrote my happy songs, every child may joy to hear. So now notice in this next section that the piper is now dropping his pipe because the child now wants him to sing. So the piper sings the same song that he had been piping, but now with words. The child is again weeping with joy and gaining more experience from the piper who is now singing him a song. The child has turned to an age where he now understands words and meanings. It is showing the development and the progression of a child um, from being a child that wants to just hear the music um, to a child that is now understanding these words and understanding the meanings behind it. The next part says, Piper, sit thee down and write, and write in a book that all may read. Now notice that the piper has gone from piping to singing and now to writing the song down. This um, is like Blake. He's... Um, turning all of this into a poem. He has turned music and the song into a tangible thing. He stays with the pastoral context as he plucks a hollow reed and makes a rural pen out of it. The child suddenly vanishing in this part of the poem um, could mean that the child has finally grown up, um, that they are no longer in the state of innocence. They are no longer floating in a cloud above um, the piper anymore. The repetitive phrase, and I, um, in the next section, creates an anaphora because the same phrase is repeated at the beginning of the sentence structures. Anaphoras often help with emphasizing what is being said, and um, often in poems it's used to add more emotion. Um, you can see this in um, many well-known like speeches, poems, um, you see it in um, Winston Churchill's um, We Shall Fight on the Beaches, where he begins 
all of his phrases with we shall um and it really um engages the audience and brings a lot of emotion to what he's saying um the sentence and i stain the water clear is um an oxymoron that um blake uses um this is where um words that are contradictory to one another are placed together staining the water clear has been said to refer the water um being stained to make an ink um but i've also seen that it could also be looked at um, from a christian point of view where the water represents christ's blood um and it being stained um, is the sins of the people um christ is taking on himself the sins of the world um, by the water being stained clear. Um, so in conclusion, you can see that Blake is showing and expressing what innocence is and who he is as the author of these poems. He writes these poems in a form of a lyric, which is a poem that has a musical quality to it. It shows his purpose and his inspiration for writing the Songs of Innocence. There's so much that you can get from first going through the poems that you are studying and finding your own meanings, researching the words that you find. And then after doing all of that, go and look at what other people are saying about it. When I did this at first, I felt like I was able to find meanings that I wasn't able to find anywhere else. I hope that you liked this video and I hope to make more in the future that will help with poetry and literature. Thank you for watching.